Hey guys, it's Monty Isom, commercial photographer, and recently I did a tutorial on the business side of photography with F-stoppers. It's called Making Real Money, the Business of Commercial Photography. You could check out the link below. Today I want to talk to you about a major issue that photographers face, and that's undercharging for a job. I want to introduce you to this guy, Greg Shipman, who ended up billing $31,000 extra on top of what he originally was going to bid on a job just by being informed and plugging in the right numbers at the right market value. These are the type of success stories that make sharing this information totally worth it. Here we are in New York City. As you can tell by the background noise, you might hear some jackhammers, you might hear some trucks backing up. We have photographer Greg Shipman, who's come in from Tulsa, Oklahoma, to talk to us about this job where we increased at $31,000 from initial estimate to what they ended up billing. Greg, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. Um, first of all, why don't we introduce a little bit of uh, what kind of work you typically okay. do. My wife and I own a, a studio in Tulsa. Tulsa is a small market, typically, my clients are senior portrait clients. They're small direct to client commercial photography projects. Our typical client spend is probably around $1,500. So is this job your first big advertising gig? Yes, this was the first time we actually worked through an agency for a national brand client. For those who may or may not you know, know what this is, it's like you're getting this email from an ad agency right. for an advertising job with a, a national client. Yes. International client. Yes, it was a national client that everybody would know the name. And uh, this was going to be on their website, it's gonna be on billboards, it's gonna be on mailers, it's gonna be uh, seen by thousands and thousands of people. You get that first email, what's your reaction? My reaction is uh, I was like the dog that caught the car. This was something that, that my wife and I had talked about and uh, it was an opportunity that we knew eventually we were going to get this opportunity to bid on a project like this. This is what we were trying to build our portfolio towards and uh, we were excited about it. Uh, but it was also a little overwhelming getting that email and now it's there in the inbox and we've got to reply to it and not sound like newbies. This has to be way different than what you're typically ready to respond right away. Sure. Someone asking to do some senior portraits right. for yeah, their son or their daughter right. coming out of school. Did you have any idea putting together an estimate or even what needed to be included for a job this big? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> the shot list was massive, uh, and that's probably the most overwhelming aspect of it. Uh, this was a job that they needed quality, which my portfolio supported, but they also needed speed, which meant I needed to put together a team that was going to be able to set up, tear down, get it done, get it done, move on to the next shot. On the front end of that, trying to imagine, okay, wh who do we need on our team for, to, to make this happen? And what kind of numbers are we going to talk about for this person, this person, this person, and how are we gonna charge this client? And at the same time, you're dealing with the fact that you've never bid on something this large. There's a little bit of uh, self-conscious doubt, I guess, that creeps in as far as should I really push what I think this is worth since I haven't worked on an agency job like this before. So your regular day rate that you do for your senior portraits or things like this, what did that look like compared to what you build on this gig? It was really different. A day rate, again, is a, is a term that really wasn't in our lexicon for our day-to-day -day business with our direct client uh, projects and our, and our portrait clients. Typically, when we're working with senior portraits, when we're working with small local businesses, it's a one to two hour project here and there, 90 minutes here and there. Uh, so we have session fees that cover uh, that small period of time. Here we're looking at eight hour days. In some cases, the schedule put us into additional time over, over and above eight hours. So we had to have a, a rate that reflected an entire day, which was new to us. And what was that rate? That rate was uh, $2,250. So when you think about it, how do you get to that 2250? To get to that number, um, that again, the, the value of my purchase of this video, to me, the biggest value was access to the Facebook group because that's exactly the kind of question that you can go there and ask and get input, not only from you, which I appreciate, uh, but input from, from other professional commercial photographers from around the world. We rarely had to wait more than an hour uh, to, to have people chime in. And uh, I mean, I know you're a busy guy, but even you, I don't think we had a day go by when we asked a question that you didn't answer the question personally by the end of the day. 
Yeah, I'm really proud of, of the whole group jumping in that, you know, it's not all wallflowers. Right. Just sitting and reading and following. There's people who really interact on this and really give solid information. I mean, there's times where I read someone's response and I just say, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because they, the, they hit it on the head. And it was a game changer for us. Um, and you know, another, another key aspect of this was the PDF documents that were included in the tutorial. Uh, it really helped us not only price the value of various line items, but just the structure of it and what line items to include, what they needed to look like, and, and how to present it so that it just looked like a professional bid from somebody who knew what they were doing. Now, you know, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this, okay? So you, know, you reach out to the, to the Facebook group. In your mind, where was the number? Did you have like a, well, I think this is probably gonna be about this much. I was both concerned about putting something in that was too high, given my relative inexperience working with large agency projects. But I also understood that if I put something in too low, I wouldn't be taken seriously and would probably be rejected as somebody that is not, doesn't understand the scope of the project. Right. So our initial thought on this was somewhere $25,000 as, as an overall scope of what this might look like. I remember when you had put up this post and you had asked, you know, I started looking through the line items and something that hit me straight away was like line item number two. Yes. And that was the usage per image. Right. And at that first email, they were asking for 100 images over an eight day shoot. Yes. Now it turned out to be that you've shot the first half of this at right. four days. So you're looking at initially at 50 images. Right. But um, do you recall what your usage was on that? I do. Uh, I actually pulled this out of thin air uh, and came up with $50 an image on a usage fee. So usage was one of those items right. that you had never done before, but that was one of the big ones that changed on sure. here. And you know, we ended up coming to what two hundred fifty dollars per image Correct, yes. on you know fifty images, right? And which they then purchased ten additional, right. Based on the fact of how many images they loved and how much yes. they wanted to use. So all of a sudden, you know, that blows up this budget a lot. Absolutely. Subsequent to this job, have you uh, put usage on other? Yes, Projects. yes. Uh, you know, even, even smaller jobs where we're still dealing direct with clients, uh, anytime we're putting together a commercial uh, uh, quote for somebody, we still include uh, usage fees, day rates, the whole nine yards, exactly the way that we did it for this national advertising agency. Um, I do that even if I'm not going to charge them at that level so that we can show them the value of what we are charging them. Mm -hmm. and then apply a discount to get to whatever their budget may be if it's a job that makes sense to do for less. I know also one of the big things was retouching. Yes. That the client ended up using you to do all the retouching right. per image uh, in the end. And how much did you end up charging for retouching per image? We charged $250 an image for retouching. Awesome. So yeah. you had $250 for usage per image plus $250 for retouching per image. Yes. And we're looking at 60 images. All of a sudden we're talking about real money. Yes. So let's talk about some of these specific line items that people might not think of putting okay. into an estimate. Uh, number one, I staffed up on photo assistance beyond what I thought I needed so that we could be fast and be mobile. Get in, get out, get the next shot set up and have the client and the agency not having to wait on us. Um, secondly, there were, there were things that we had to consider that were far outside my normal scope of putting together needs for and, and that would be hair and makeup. Uh, talent wrangler, uh, digital tech, um, producer, art director. These are all things that we needed on set to get, this, to get this done at the quality that we had promised and at the speed they needed to see from us. Now are you charging each of those people's direct rates or were you taking any margin on those? I didn't take any margin on those. The, their rates went to them. Awesome. I feel the same way. I know many people do mark up um, the people who work with them. Yeah. Personally, I feel that you know, they're usually the hardest working people on set. Right. They should get what, they, what we bill. Exactly. And if I can bill more than what they usually get, then I can give it to them. Happy crew makes for good photos. Exactly. The bottom line, I think, at the end was, if I, if I looked at it, it was $55,000 is what you billed overall. Right, for a four day shoot. For a four day shoot. So $55,000 sounds crazy to people who may have only done 
again, the senior, a senior portrait or like some small local stuff. But here it is, like you're living proof, like this is happening and this is real deal. Was there any pushback on the usage from the agency or on your retouching fees or anything like that? There was no pushback and it was, it was interesting to me because I didn't know what to expect once I hit send on this email. And my hands were a little sweaty when I sent that because that's <laughs> out of my wheelhouse. Uh, it's, as, it was a little overwhelming. Uh, that was a really big number to me. And, uh, but we sent that and I felt confident in sending that because I realized working with your, with your group and getting some of the answers that I got to our questions that if we didn't send something in that ballpark, it wasn't going to look like a legit bid from somebody that knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Now that the scope of the project, we knew that we could handle this. There was nothing, it was a long list, but there was nothing individually on the list that, that we hadn't done before. Right. So putting this together and, and putting that, that bid out there, it was, a little, it, was, it was a little itchy doing that. Yeah. But oh, yeah. we didn't get any pushback. And there was no pushback. No. Yeah, and that I think is what a lot of people might be afraid of. Yeah. Is that, you know, well if I put in this big number, they're just never even going to respond to right. me. I'm not, there's no way they're going to pay that money. Yeah. And you know, on your hundred percent living proof, like, yeah, this happens Yeah. and this happens and it's legit. And like, this is what business looks like. Right. Yeah. You know, um, when you think about what an advertising client, the money that they make off of imagery that, that we create, it's astronomical compared to what we built. Yeah, it so is. So I think that's a big part that, that people don't really think about is um, how much money does the client make right. ultimately from, from our imagery. Now we talked about all, you know, all these additional you know, assistance and, and line items that you didn't have before that you haven't used before. Right. So you know, what was from your first draft to your final billing, what was the difference of what you took home? Because you got to pay all these people. You got to pay your assistants. You got to right. pay the food stylist. Um, what was your initial take home from this, and what was your 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 haul at the end? Uh, significant difference, Monty. Our 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 take home on our original bid was around twelve thousand five hundred, and after the appropriate revisions and. Uh, even staffing up and coming up with additional line items that we needed to fill out our team and pricing those correctly, our take home went to 38000 Awesome. So yeah, I mean, on a $55,000 overall job, I don't want people just to, to hear, oh, $55,000, yeah, they didn't increase that much, they had so many more people. Right. $38,000 from twelve five yeah. is a big spread. It is. So coming away from this job, being in the small market and having the experience that you did, you know, what would you say to someone who is also in a smaller market who's looking to invest in their business and in education to try to learn how to do bigger and better jobs? Well, <clears throat> I'm a big believer in self-education when it comes to uh, really any kind of endeavor, but especially business endeavors, artistic endeavors. Um, and in this case, this was a $300 purchase which is not an insignificant amount for a small market photographer like me. That's a car payment. I had to look at that and, and justify that and see if I really felt like that was going to equip me to take my business to another level. Needless to say, as a result of, of that purchase, I, I consider that a hell of an investment. It was a great return on my $300, probably the best $300 I've spent on my photography business in the last 10 years. It, it was great because not only did the, the client uh, remark during and after the shoot about how smoothly it went, how professionally it was executed, um, but the, the talent that was on hand provided through the agency, uh, most of them unprompted uh, remarked afterwards what a professional production it was and how smoothly it went and how, um, how much they look forward to working with us on, on, on the next project. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So guys, you know, we talk a lot about this tutorial and all this stuff, but that's the smallest part of this. All of this information to be shared is so then photographers can go and make money as photographers. You know, I do this day in, day out, but I want everyone to come in with the same information, the same confidence, knowing what they should be bidding, looking at what line items sound crazy 
on paper, but knowing that this is a real deal thing and that other photographers are charging this and that if you come in on a $1,200 bid on a job, you're gonna look small time and most likely you're not gonna get it. Unfortunately in photography, people don't like to talk about this stuff, but it's really, really important that people are informed, they understand what other people are charging, even understand what kind of estimate to put together and what line items you need for it. Because all it does is make our whole photo community stronger whenever people know what things are valued at. This has taken me an entire career to amass this information. I'm hoping that by sharing it in this video, it inspires you to make steps in going after jobs that you want and putting together legit stuff, because it can really change your life. And this did change our life. We're a small studio in a small market. And the take home from this job represented 50% of our total income from the previous year. And that's one job. That's and, one job. And you've only shot half, you have another half coming. We have another half coming and we have a lot of residual direct to client work as a result of doing this monthly projects with this client. And thanks so much for doing this and coming in and talking to My us. My pleasure. You know, people don't want to be open. People don't like to really share their information and I appreciate you putting it out there and really going through the numbers, going through your experience on this. Um, yeah, this is inspiring to me to keep this going. If you want to hear more about real jobs and real estimates that I've done, go over to fstoppers.com, check out our tutorial. It's called Making Real Money, The Business of Commercial Photography. And I'm hoping that it impacts you the way that it's impacted Greg.